Okay, we are now recording. So let me get the slide so you set up from the current slide. Now we're ready to go. First, uh, let's just, I'm sorry, I should have done the announcement before I did that. I think you know, you've heard of all. Uh, they're always looking for tutors, but now they have a lot, some tutors available if you need, if you either want a tutor or have some need for tutoring, check them out, both places, both campuses, uh, SSS and Space Center, both campuses. And on the Birmingham campus is also the uh, STEM lab, which is this one. Bookstore hours, Mondays and Tuesdays, 8 to 6, Wednesdays and Thursdays, 8 to 5, Fridays, 8 to 3. And then the math team, if we're going to meet this week, I think we're going to try to get in. I don't know what day. i got to meet, get with the guys that might be coming and see when they can do it. So I'll let you know as soon as I know. All right. We're in the text, section 7.9, and the slide set is 7.8. Did you have any questions? Oh, I thought I saw your hand go up. All right. What we're doing now is numerical integration. Okay. Here is an integral, if I can get my cursor on board. Why did it do that? Okay. I think it's better. All right. Here's an integral. Y is equal to e to the minus x squared over 2. Now, if I gave you a few hours to try to integrate this analytically, I don't think you're going to manage it. Because I do not know how to integrate that. Substitution doesn't work. Uh, I can't think of anything that would work. In fact, I think there's no analytical solution to that. Okay? But you can still get an approximation to it. And this is what we mean by numerical integration. The areas under this bell-shaped curve are now computed, are computed, using numerical integration. Okay? Uh, and this is a bell-shaped curve. It's not the normal, well, related to the normal distribution. But by itself, impossible, I, I think, to, uh, to integrate analytically. So that's what this section is, is going to be dealing with. How do you new, do numerical integration? Especially when you can't integrate uh, analytically. How do you approximate that with the uh, numerical? And we're going to cover three different rules. Okay, Each one of them works. Um, some of them are faster than others. That's the difference. So we'll first go with the first, the simplest, the most straightforward. Um, and by the way, we're also going to do functions. We know what the answers are that we can, so we can compare our answers. Okay? Uh, but then once we've got confidence they're working, then we can do some of these we don't know the answer to. Um, if you have a function, Okay, and the function you can evaluate, you just can't integrate. I mean, you can plug in values. <coughs> so this doesn't sound too unusual. Let's start with the domain, the values of x are covered by this function. We'll assume they're from a to b. Okay, a can be a negative number, it can be a positive number, whatever, just b is greater than a. All right, then what we're going to do next is divide that uh, domain into N, capital N, we're going to do equal increments, okay? Just like you do for Riemann sums and things like this. So we're going to start the first one, X of zero is going to be an A. The last one is going to be X of N. If that N were eight, that would be X of eight would be B. If that N were 100, X of 100. We're going to split that interval between A and B into uh, N equal pieces, okay? Well, how big is each piece? Well, each piece we're going to name delta X, okay? That's going to be the size of it. What is that delta X? That would be B minus A, that's the total length, 
We divide it by n increments. So each delta x is going to be b minus a divided by that capital N. Okay, because we're dealing with the piece. So the x of 0 is going to be at a. And then x of 1 is going to be at a plus 1 delta x. One in increment. x of 2 will be uh, x of a plus 2 delta x's. And x of 3 will be a plus 3 delta x's. going to be B, which would have been A plus uh, N delta X. But we don't have to say that. We know it's B already. Okay. So that's the first thing we do. Break the domain into uh, N equal pieces. Okay. Now, what we'll do next, remember we said the function that you're integrating is is uh, valuable. I mean, in other words, you can evaluate it, but you just can't integrate it. It's a complicated function. So then, for any of your y values, for anywhere one of those increments there, we're just going to pick the x of j that represents that's in that increment. So, and then we're going to evaluate l at x of j, because you can evaluate l, you just can't integrate it. So we plug in that value. Now, what will that value x of j be? It's going to be a plus j delta x. Now, what that gives you <coughs> is the right-hand end, okay? Because the first one, a, that's x of 0, and for the, if this were j equal 1, then you would do plus delta x. Right hand side of the estimate there. And then each one of them would be on the right. So that's how we do that. Written nasty. Okay? Not a difficult thing to do. It just looks sort of strange to write it that way. Alright. Here's an example of that. Here is some function f represented by this graph. Okay? We don't know what the function is, so we don't know how to. Uh, integrate it, but we're going, in this case, here's your A, there's your B, it looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, let's just say 5 equal pieces, so the first piece is going to be, the first A is equal to uh, X0, okay, and you can plug that into the function, whatever that function is, and that's going to give you um, Y0. Alpha of x, alpha of x zero is y zero. Okay. And then the next increment at x of one is x of one is a plus delta x. Delta x is b minus a divided by five. And add the first of those to it would be one fifth of that distance would go to here. So that would be at x equal one. You plug that in. So that, and they call this piece of N, okay, and I notice this is backwards, okay. What we're doing is the trapezoid rule. So in your book, that's where they start, right? In the book, if the rest of you, 7.9 begins with the midpoint rule. We'll come back and do the midpoint rule in a minute because it's uh, the silver. And by the way, I didn't mark you here. Did I? I'm forgetting all sorts of things today. Let me do this before I forget it. What's that? Right. But in, remember, in the new edition, they put in that section on examples of integration that we did last week one day, yeah. And that was, uh, I don't remember which, let me see which section that was. Let me 
chapter 7. That was uh, strategies for integration. It was 7.6 in this book. In your book, 7.6 was improper integrals. And because they had put uh, 7.6 strategies for in integration, that made 7.7 .7 improper integrals. It made 7.8 probability and in integration. We talked about that a slideshow on those two sections, but you're not responsible for them. And now we're in 7.9, which is in your book, the 7.8 numerical integration. This one you are responsible for. But this is the first time I've taught this course from this book, and this is the first time I've noticed they do it in a different order. And, and yeah, you'll be tested on this one. That's why I'm going over it in more detail here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, for those folks who have the new edition, 7.9 is numerical integration, and it starts with the midpoint rule. The old edition started with the trapezoid rule. That's what we're starting with since the slide shows this, and the silver's the only one here. She's got the old book, so we'll we'll do that. Uh, but you're, we're going to cover both of them, okay? So I was noticing the book and the slide set weren't lining up well, okay? Uh, so this is figure f in the new edition. This is figure four, not figure two, okay? Uh, in your edition, this is figure two. Yeah, okay. So let me mark the silver here. And the other two are not here yet. Hopefully, one or both will be coming later. All right, so this is a trapezoid rule. We split the, the uh, integral the, from x equal a to x equal b. You're integrating now a definite integral with limits to it. You're going from x going from a to b. Okay? You don't do this with it. Uh, indefinite integrals, okay, where you don't have limits, because where are you integrating from? You don't know where to start and where to end. But this one we do know is from x equal a to b, okay? So we use that. So we set up our problem like this, and here is Marcus. And you've got the new edition of the book, right? Okay. So here's the difference. The slide set is doing this section in a different order. Number one, the slide set is showing this as 7.8, in your book, 7.9. Okay. But, in your book, turn over to the trapezoid rule on page 432. That's where this is starting. Then once we do the trapezoid rule, we'll come back and do the midpoint rule. Okay. So we're starting on, uh, we've already done figure one on, on the, beginning on 431, but then rather than going the midpoint rule, we're flipping over one page and starting on the trapezoid rule. Okay. Because the silver was here, she had the old book, I had the old slide set, so we said, let's go with it. You came in too late. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, so what we've done, we split the domain. And by the way, like I'm saying, uh, this is integrating definite integrals, okay? You can't do numerical integration on an indefinite integral because you have nowhere to begin, no place to end. Okay, so we're doing this on definite integrals. We're doing trying to integrate this function, which we may not know how to integrate. That's the key, but we do know how to evaluate. Okay, so what we do, we take the integral from a to b. That's the only one we're interested in, and looking at the function between a and b, split that integral into n equal pieces, okay? That's capital N, okay? Since we're making them equal pieces, each piece is going to be B minus A divided by N, okay? You got the total length of N, of B minus A, divide that by N pieces, and that will give you how big these pieces, okay? So, in this illustration I have, X equals zero is at A, so one is at uh, a plus delta x, so delta x is b minus a divided by n. x minus x of two is here, x of three is here, x of four is here, and x of five is here. Equal integral. And now the function, even though we may not be able to integrate it, we can evaluate it. So you put in x of zero here, which is a, and evaluate, that gives you y sub zero. Put in a plus delta x, b minus a divided by n, that's your delta x, that gives you your x1, evaluate that, 
that y1, then whatever the next value is here, uh, a plus 2 delta x, that's 2 times uh, b minus a divided by n. To calculate that y, you all have to calculate it again. Add another one to it, and then you've got, this is x sub 2, and that would be y sub 2 up there. So if you can evaluate the function, you just can't integrate it. x sub 3, that would be y sub 3, x sub 4, y sub 4, x sub 5, which is, we did five intervals here, that should be x sub u, y sub n. So you do that. Now, here's what the trapezoid, trapezoid rule says. You've got these values. Let's estimate the area under the curve by the trapezoid from this point to that point. Notice these two lines are parallel. The, the limits here, the, the boundaries are parallel. So this forms a trapezoid. This one's uh, perpendicular. So the area of this trapezoid plus the area of that trapezoid, we're other guessing the area under the curve, but not by much, okay? The area under this one, man, that's awfully close, okay? Because that's almost a straight line there. That's going to be really good. But here, the trapezoid is overestimated. Well, is that enough to make up for that? Maybe. Is this enough to make up for that? It looks pretty close. So actually, the trapezoid rule is going to give us an area not far from being that of the curve itself, right? Now, how do you make that better? Make a better approximation to your answer? Make a smaller delta x. In other words, make more intervals. This was 5. What if we did 10? That means we have a value here. That would be a very good estimation. That would be a good estimation. That would be a better estimation. That would be a better estimation. It won't be good either way. This would be better here and here, okay? And this would be better here and there. So you get better estimation all along. Then do it by 20. Do it by 100, you know? Get a computer to do it for you, okay? <laughs> That's what you ultimately do in the numerical uh, integration, okay? So that's the technique. Split this into equal increments. Evaluate at each boundary of the increment and then calculate the area of the trapezoid. And then if you want a better approximation, make your trapezoid narrower, you know, put more, more estimations in there, okay? So that's going to lead to, oh, okay. <clears throat> I don't know exactly what the big deal with this is. They do make a special case of it. The shaded trapezoid has an area. This is just one of those trapezoids we had uh, back in the classroom. I guess it was a J minus one to J one. That looks pretty good if you watch it pretty good. Okay. What is the area of that? Let's see. One half. Okay. Now I don't know. Do y'all remember what the formula for an area of a trapezoid was? Do y'all remember that? If my arm waving doesn't do it, I'll actually draw it. Here's your trapezoid, here to there to there. Okay? Now what I want you to do is picture putting another trapezoid on top of that. It's going to be the same trapezoid, but I'm going to take this thing and flip it over that way. So the point here is down here, and the low point here is up there. That's going to make a perfect rectangle. One. Okay? And we know what the area of that rectangle is. It would be this height plus that height. Because this one plus that one would be up here. And this one plus this one would be up there. That's a the rectangle. Okay? So add these two together and divide by two. Okay? Is really what you're doing. Times the width. The width is the delta x, which is b minus a divided by two. I mean divided by n. Okay, so you know what the width is. The height is half equal. Add these together and take the average. Okay, in other words, that over two. So that's where the one half comes from. One half to delta x times adding this side to that side. This is the 
twice as much. Say three is not twice as four. Add those two together, take half of it, that's as the average, times the delta, that gives you your area of the trapezoid. That's the average of each of those areas of the trapezoid uh, with the left hand and right hand rectangles. Okay? Now, what does it mean left hand and right hand rectangles? Well, the left hand rectangle would be if you added that. The right hand rectangle is, is this one, left hand point, right hand point. So the average between those two would be right there, with it. Okay? And that would give you the uh, area of the rectangle. Of the trapezoid. Uh, Well, yeah, it would be. That would be exactly half this would be there. Okay. That would be exactly what it was. <laughs> the average of those two. So this is the formula for whatever your function is, uh, this is y at x sub j minus 1, this is y at x sub j. Okay. Calculate those. You can always evaluate the function there and add them together, take half of it, and multiply it by your your uh, width, which is your delta x. So here is the trapezoid rule. Okay. The nth trapezoidal approximation, that means if you divided that trapezoid into five equal pieces, 15 equal pieces, 15 million yeah. equal pieces, uh, then the, the nth, the fifth approximation, the, the, uh, the seventh approximation, the fifteenth approximation, whatever. Okay. So this function. Now we're assuming that we don't know how to integrate this function. Maybe it's just not integrable. But if you can evaluate the function at every point you're interested, then you can do it. This is your a, that's your b, this is your x sub z, or that's your x sub n, and you evaluate it as you go to the trapezoid rule. So one half the delta x, that's in every one of those terms, okay? Let's go back to this picture, okay? God, I got to pick up the wrong pen. Here we go. All right. Okay. Uh, you're doing this area plus this area plus this area plus that area plus that area right? This area here is one half delta x, that's the width of the area, times y0 plus y1, right? Okay. Plus the next area here, this is y1, so it's one half delta x, that's one half the width times the sum of these. That would be y1 plus y2 plus one-half delta x times y3 plus y4, right? Plus one-half delta x, y4 plus y5. And that's the last one that we did here, okay? One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Oh, I missed one. Oh, here's, I missed this one. Plus one half, you should have caught me, delta x times y2 plus y3. I didn't think I had enough terms there. That's five, five trapezoids. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? Add those up, you approximate the area under the curve. Not going to be exact, but it's going to be close. Now notice, every one of those terms has a one-half delta x in it. Because it's one-half, the average of these two, so that's why the one-half is in every one. The delta x is in every one, so it's the same width. So you can factor that on the outside. So the trapezoid for, this is T5, would be one-half delta x. And what is your delta x? B minus A over 5. Because that's your N in this case, 5, 5 pieces. Okay, now let's sum what's left over. This is why I stopped for a moment. Notice we have, we've got all this on the outside, on every one. So 
then you've got y1, y0 plus y1 plus y1 plus y2 plus y2 plus y3 plus y3 plus y4 plus y4 plus y5. Notice we counted all the interior ones twice. But the exterior ones, y0 and y5, we only counted once. So therefore, we have y0 plus 2y1 plus 2y2 plus 2y3 plus 2y4 plus y5. That's what your trapezoid rule gives you. Okay? Note that, and we'll go over a couple slides, and that's exactly what they show here. Okay? If I can get it. Okay. Trapezoid rule, when you're integrating a definite integral, a to b, a is going to be this end, b is going to be that end, f of x, whatever that f of x is, if it's integral. If it's evaluable, in other words, you can evaluate it every point in between, it better be, okay, then this is your trapezoid rule for n divisions. We did phi, it could be 100, it could be whatever. One half your delta x plus your delta x, b minus a divided by n. If you rub that into 15 increments, that would be b minus a over 15. Then you'd be doing p sub 15, okay? And your y sub i is your f at each of the endpoints. Now, a, and j is equal to 0, uh, f y sub 1 would be f of x sub 1, which would be a plus j delta x, is your delta x. So it would be one increment more, then the next would be two increments over, three increments over, something like this. Those are your y's. You can evaluate those. You can just plug in values for that function, add them together, but you count the first one once, the second through the next to the last, you count twice, and the last one you only count once. And that's how you do your trapezoid rule. All right. Enough blah, blah, blah. Let's see if we can do... Now, this is example one in this text. The midpoint rule, they didn't give you an example. They just gave you pointers. We'll come back and, and do something. So let's do the trapezoid rule here for this problem. We're going to use that table in a minute, but let's set up the problem first. They don't give you the problem first. No. Okay, let's go back. Let's set it up on this slide, okay? I normally wouldn't, but let's do. Okay? Example one. Calculate T8. This is not coming in well. Okay, now it is. T8 stands for what? The T tells you trapezoid rule. The 8 tells you how many increments. Okay? For the integral, integral from 1 to 3 of sine of x squared dx. Anyone want to integrate that for me in, uh, by hand? Good luck. Okay. Then it says, then use a computer algebra system to do Tn for n equal 50, 100, 500, 1,000, and 10,000. We're not going to do that, I don't think. Okay. We'll do it for 8. Okay. Now, where would you begin? start down here. Your delta x is, and that's going to represent your dx here, the delta x is b minus a over n. Well, what should b in this case? 3. That's your b. What's your a? That would be 1. Okay. Alright. So that would be uh, your delta x is going to be 3 minus 1 over n was 8. 
it's going to be 2 over 8, which is going to be 1 quarter. 1 quarter of a unit is going to be your increment. Okay? Now, so you did that first. Then what you do, <coughs> what I would do, is write down those delta x's. The first one's going to be 1. Then you're going to have 1.25, right? Because the increment, this is 0 0.25. These are your x values. Starting with 1, 1 1.25, 1 1.5, 1.75, 2. 2.25, 2 2.5, 2.75, and 3. 3.0, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You actually have 9 points because this is x sub 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that is to us right, okay? Now, what you're going to calculate, these are your y sub, I think they call them j's, don't they? I believe that's what it is. Yeah, j. x sub j's, so you're going to calculate your y sub j. Okay? What's the y sub j? Alpha of x sub j. Okay? So you know what the function is. There's your function right there. Sine of x squared okay well by the way get your computers in radian mode any of these are dealing with radians not degrees ever okay you get it in radian mode and we're going to do uh, sine of 1 because 1 squared is 1 You're in radian mode, what is sine of 1? Okay, you're going to stop there? Okay. Uh, let, let me just tell you, uh, the book looks like they... Take it out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. So give it to me seven places. Okay. Okay, now for the 1.25, the first thing you're going to do is square that and then take the sign of that. Okay, 4.9. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Sorry, okay. I was thinking, I don't know how you jump down there. Okay, I could have done that differently, but let me do it this way. Okay, 0 0.9999. 655. 655, okay. Uh, take your 1.5 and square it. And then take the sign of that number. Okay, one point seven five. Uh, take that, square it, and then seven three one. Okay, point seven seven. Oh, 731. Okay, got it. Okay, 1.75. Square it and then take a sign of it. 079. Okay. 079. 01. 02. Okay. Let's take 2, square it, and take the sign of that.
Say again. Minus Negative. Three, what did you say? After eight? Zero, Zero. okay. Two. Four. Okay. Okay, 2.25, square it, and take the sign of that. Six, he said? Yes. Okay. All right. 2.25, square that, and take the sign of it. Um, 2.5 squared, and take the sign of that. Two three. Three three, okay. One seven nine. Two. Two. Okay. Seven point seven five. Square it and take the sign of it. Okay, positive? Okay. Zero point. One nine one. one. Okay. And take three point zero, square that, and take a uh, the sign of it. Zero point four one two. One one eight four. Okay. So that gives us our values. Okay? <clears throat> we're going to do to get the TN, the trapezoidal rule for 8, T8, is going to be 1 half of our 0 0.25, that's our delta X, and then we're going to start adding these together, okay? Uh, and I'm not going to write them all down because I've written them here, but I want you to, uh, to do it. 0.8414709 plus twice two times 0.9999655. I would be punching these in. Okay. Yeah. Start with 0.84. Okay. Have you got your 0.5 times 0.25? times and open a parentheses. Okay, inside that parentheses you first put 0 0.8414709 plus two times 0.9999655 Yeah, yeah. Plus two times 0.778073 Seven seven eight zero seven three plus two times point zero seven nine zero one zero two. Okay, wait, okay. All right. Let's go back and make sure we're starting at the right place. Can you see all your numbers yet, or are they off screen? Okay. It's one of these plus two of those plus two of those plus two of those. That's a point zero seven nine zero one zero two. This one, that's a negative 
point out of there. I think I just set my pen down where I didn't mean to. Okay. Okay. So you got that one twice that. Plus two times a negative point zero three three one seven nine two. Plus two times this one plus nine five seven eight one nine one plus not two times but plus point four one two one one eight four. Close your parentheses and hit equal and see what you get. Huh? It won't take that many digits. Okay. Wait, okay, let me see. Let me find where they do an answer. Say that again. Uh, uh, okay. Point one nine? One point nine? One nine. Oh, 19? Oh. What's that? No, the, uh, it can't be that big, okay? Um, it, it says it should be 0. 0.4281. Okay. Did you multiply by 0. 0.5 and a 0. 0.25? You did do that at the beginning. Okay. Uh, Minus signs in at these places too. One, two, three. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the calculator, or maybe I copied a but uh, number down or something like that. It should give you something that is consider around the neighborhood of point four two eight one. Okay. And without a calculator here, I can't begin to, to tell you where that went wrong. But that's that's how you do it, okay? And like I said, first calculate your delta x, and then calculate each of your x values between 1 and 3 in this case. And the, the delta x is 2 over 8, which is 1 quarter, so 1. After this one, eight equal increments, counting inputs for nine. Uh, and then you do the function to that, and the function here was sine of x squared. So you take your x, square it, and make a sine of it. Take this x, square it, make a sine of it. This x, square it, make a sine of it. Yeah. So if we forgot to square one of those, that may have Anyway, then when you get them all done and all those values done, then you do the traffic order rule for H would be one half, which is 0.5 times 0.25 times the sum of 
one times this plus two times this plus three times this plus four times that, not polygon. One times this plus two times this plus two times that plus two times that plus two times this plus two times that plus two times that plus two times that plus plus one times that. And that should give you the right answer. And the thing that I find a little suspicious here, and not bad, but you see you have these two are both positive. These two are very largely positive, this one and this one. And that one's still pretty positive. This one is slightly positive. It's just barely past zero. This one basically would wipe out that one, kind of. Uh, these two would kind of wipe out. And uh, this won't wipe out much of anything because it's such a small number. Uh, Seems like to me, just looking at it, <coughs> you come up with this number not far off from the these two added together would be a one point two. Let's just call it that. And then These two added together is 1.2. Okay. I'm just going to right now say these two are going to wipe out each other. These two are going to wipe out each other. And if you subtract this one from that one, that would be a 0.92. Okay. So with your calculator, go ahead and do this. This is going to be really rough. Okay. 0.5. Times 0.25 times open parentheses 1.2 that would be those two added together we'll wipe out these two and those two so it'll be two times this, 2 times 0 0.9999 655 minus 2 times this, 0 0.033 Zero point six. So that's much closer, much closer. And the round off probably accounts for a lot of that. Okay. So yeah, that's making you feel better. If it came up with 19 points, okay, okay. Something's wrong with your program. Okay. That's how we do that. Now, that's the trapezoid rule. Now, what we're going to introduce next, well, okay. Here are going to be that gave you T8. And I'm going to write this on here. Uh, when N is equal to 8, your T sub weight was 0 0.4281. 0 0.4281. Okay? That's what it, the book said you got. When you go up to T equal 50, notice here you get 0 0.46. Okay? And then at 100, you get 463. At 500, you get 4632. 1,000, still 4632. And a 10,000.4362. It looks like the 
0.942. Looks like that might always be growing. So far, all these are getting larger. I don't know particularly why, but they are. So um, I would say the 0.4633 is going to be a good estimate of what that is. 0.4633. Uh, you might say 429, you know, 0.46329, but I wouldn't be too certain of that. I'd, I'd be a little better with that one. Okay? Now it says result table one suggests that this is probably 0.4633, which is what I was saying. All right. Now they have these in strange order. Okay? That's what happens when you go larger increments. Okay? I'll blow this up for you so that you can see it a little better, maybe. So my lines through there might make it harder to see. But those are the values. I couldn't write on them with it blown up, so I wrote first and then blew up later. Um, so you see, you get a lot of them. That's pretty far off. I mean, basically, that says 0.4, this says 0.5. Okay. So you're all pretty much there. Uh, you'd have to get up on the order of 50 before you got this kind of precision, two-digit precision, 100 before you got three-digit precision, 500, four-digit precision, and the, even more than 10,000, you can't get much better with four-digit precision. So I think 0.4633 is about as good as you can get. Okay. Maybe a little better, but that was done by computers. Thank you very much. Okay. I didn't want to try those by hand, not 50 or 1,000 or anything else. All right, now here's the strange thing about how they're doing this. Their slides seem way out of order. Before you calculated the first of these, the first thing you did was divide your interval from 1 to 3 into 8 subintervals, and that's exactly what you did. You're going from 1 to 3, your n eight subintervals, your delta x would be 3 minus 1, Two divided by eight is point two five. So you start at one, and one point two five, one point five, one point seven five is two, two point two five, two point five, two point seven five is three. And then those are your x values. Then plug that into your function, which was sine of x squared. So you square this first, then take the sine of it. That gives you your y values. Now I don't think they showed that, but that's how you proceed. Okay. Now, let's back up and do the midpoint rule. Okay. <clears throat> Again, you have to have an integral, a definite integral. And this time we're doing something just a little bit different. Okay. What you're doing now is finding some point on we call it the midpoint. So you start doing the same thing you did before, your nth midpoint approximation T, uh, n sub n, delta x times. Now, notice here we don't have a one half anymore, one half delta x. And that's because we're doing, and actually, I think it's better to start with the graph, okay? Let's start with this one. This time we're not doing a trapezoid based on this end to that end. That's what we did before. We did a lower trapezoid and an upper trapezoid. You know. that, that's what we did before. This time we're going to imagine that we're doing a trapezoid. Okay? But what we're going to do is do the midpoint of this interval. Break the intervals down just like we did, but now we take one more step to find the midpoint. We're not using the endpoint, we're using the midpoint. And the midpoint here, if you did a tangent line to the curve at that point. Now that sounds like it's a pain in the neck. Because the tangent line, you have to take a derivative and that kind of stuff. 
You don't have to. But just imagine you did take the tangent line there, and you're going to estimate it by this trapezoid that doesn't touch the graph anywhere except at the midpoint. Okay? And at the midpoint here, what that value is, if you did the tangent line there, that would be exactly equal to taking the rectangle there. Because the rectangle, you draw this through here, this, this whatever your tangent line is, that's going to be the same area on either side. Okay? So this is plus and that's minus. So it's just taking the area of the midpoint. So it makes your formula easier, but it makes the calculation of your x value just a little harder. Not much, just a little bit. Okay? For instance, the example we had before, your delta x was 0.25. Remember? Now we do the midpoint at another half take halfway of that, that's 0.125. Right? Yeah. Half of 0.25 is 0.125. And that would be the place that we take your functional value. Okay? You don't have to take as many, we just take one for each interval. We don't do the midpoint one, just one for each middle. But we just have to do one more step to get what that midpoint is. Do the alpha. No one half is just the base times the height. You just do one half of, of that increment to get you your midpoint. Okay? That's a lot of blah, blah, blah. Okay? But they do this without a s example, I think. Okay? Um, but before we, we, we do any further, this shows, why is this jumping around so badly? Okay. This shows two interpretations of the midpoint. Now, frankly, this, this is that same graph we had, A to B, five increments, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five increments. This time we're calculating the midpoint of each interval. We're not using this, that, 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 that. We're calculating the midpoint. This is in half again what the delta x is. Half the delta x, that's how far you go here. And that gives you c1. Here's your y of c1 or f of c1 is here. Now, this looks like this under overshot significantly, undershot significantly there. Undershot a little here, more of the overshot there, there. So that doesn't look as good as the trapezoids did. But we know that if you did tangent lines here, these trapezoids would be exactly like this. And look at this one now. Not much missing much at all here or here, here or here, but still over. This one, remember, was right on the money before and it's almost right on the money now. Undershooting here and here, undershooting. Guess what? That's a pretty good approximation. But the areas are the same on these. So you don't have to worry about the tangent. Just do half of the midpoint. So you do delta x times, and then you have to calculate your midpoint first and then do it. Okay. Now, the calculations are, okay. To get your x is a little, little bit more calculation, but to do the rest of it is easier calculation. So let's see what they do that. Let's bump back and let's do our, the same one we did under trapezoid rule, let's do it on the midpoint rule. Okay? And let's see if I can find that slide again. I don't think I can. Yes, I can. Look at that. Okay? But I'm going to erase a lot of it. Okay? For instance... We're not going to use that value at all. But we set up and start it just like we did before. Okay. Let 
with one exception. We find the midpoint between each of these, okay? And these are the values we're going to calculate, okay? So the midpoint here is 1.1. Uh, 2.5. You see that? Okay. And this will be 1. Is it? I'm trying to do it in my head. It's one point, uh, 0. 0.125 added to that. 1.375. And this will be 1.825, I think. Check me on this. This will be 1. Point... No, that was in the wrong place. Sorry about that, Lee one. I was adding the wrong one. Too soon. This this next one here is 1.625. This is 1.8. 7.5, I think. And this is 2.125. And this is 2.375. This is 2.625. And this is 2.875. All right. Those are our values now. You see, we, we did everything like we did before, but now find the midpoint now we go back and do the, the calculation like we did. <clears throat> and here's the function. This is now your x value. So 1.125, square it, and take the sine of it. Be sure you're in radian mode. 1.125, square it, and take the, the sine of it. One two five, square that, and then take the sine of that. Nine five two. Nine five two. Two. Huh? Nine five two. Three. Okay, I'm sorry, I can't hear well. Seven nine five. Okay, seven nine five. Four. Four. Okay. That's point nine five three seven nine five four, right? Yeah. Okay. That's a three seven in there. Okay. One point three seven five, square it, and uh, take the sign of that. Okay. 289. Two, eight, nine, two. Six. Two. two. I'm sorry, I don't hear well. Two. Okay. Next one, you're going to take 1.625, square it, and take a sign of that. Okay. 1.875. Take a square that and then take a sign of it. Okay. 2.125. Two point one two five, square it, <coughs> and take a sign of that. Two point one two five, square it, and take a. Zero. Three. 
after the four. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Two point three seven five. Square that and take a sign of it. Negative zero point five nine nine. Two four seven zero. Okay, I'll leave off the zero. Okay, two point six two five squared and <clears throat> take a sign. Zero point five seven zero six. The six is a seven. Okay. Okay. Seven. Six, seven. Zero. zero. Okay, I'll leave off the zero. Okay. Two point eight seven five squared and take the sign. Eight seven five square it and take the sign. <coughs> Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, what we do with this one is the midpoint rule says that you do just your delta x, which is 0.25, times the sum of these. No other thing, no ones and twos. So let's just take the sum first. Sum of point and then whatever your calculator can handle. 9537954 plus 0.9492892 plus 0.482745 minus 0.3653719 I think it is minus 0.980743 minus 0.5 plus 0 0.570767 plus 0 0.6149645 put an equal sign you add all those together and multiply it by 0 0.25 okay and Except for having to calculate an extra x, you don't have fewer x's there. You just add those up together and multiply by your delta x. Will it do this? Equal, get a sum of those, and then multiply by 0.25. Okay, um, I can use all the digits I right. see, like, uh, right. uh, two digits in the right. I got 0 0.480. Uh, Very good, that's much closer. Uh, let's see, they didn't do it using midpoint rules, so that's just going to take, you know, that. But remember, it should come out closer to the same we got 0.46 before. So not far off, and that's a round-off error. If you round to two digits, you're not going to get any better accuracy than two digits or precision than two digits. Okay. So that's how we do the midpoint rule. Okay. In some ways, an easier calculation after you get the delta x. I mean, the, the, the values for x. Okay. Um, so that was the midpoint rule. Now, error bounds. This is the middle of page 433. 
applications, it's easy. I'm sorry, it's important. Nothing's easy. It's important to know the accuracy of the numerical proclamation. We define the error MN and M and TN, MN being the midpoint rule with N increments and TN being the trapezoid rule for two increments. Okay? Uh, and what we mean by that is the absolute value of the difference between the actual value of the integral and the midpoint approximation or the trapezoidal approximation. Now, we don't always know what the actual is, but if we did know, this would give it to us. And here's the, uh, the rule for those two midpoint formulas. As my head is clogging up like crazy. Now, in your book, they have these in reverse order. Error MN first and then K TN second. On the slide set, they showed the error of TN first because they did TN first. Okay. So, anyway, here they are. Now, notice, okay, here's your, an assumption here. Assume that F double prime exists and is continuous on the interval from A to B. Okay, the second derivative. So what you do, you have the function there, you can take a derivative of it. You may not integrate it, but you can take a derivative of it. Then take a second derivative of it. And if that exists and is con a continuous function, then let K2 be a number such that the absolute value of the second derivative is always less than or equal to K2. For all x's in the interval a to b. So basically what you do, you take that second derivative, look at it, see if you can plot that, sometimes they're really hard, from a to b, and sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. Take the absolute value of the extremes of that. The extreme may be at the end point, or it may be at a maximum end. So take the, the maximum value absolute value of that, let that be your k2. So do that for all it, and you do that over that whole interval a to b. Now, with that in mind, your error for the trapezoid rule, actually your book may have a midpoint, no, it has midpoint first. Your book has midpoint first and trape trapezoid first. No, your book, yeah, I can get your book has midpoint first and trapezoid second. This slide is going to be the other one. Okay, but notice what the deal is here. The numerators are identical. And n squared in the denominator is identical. It's just that the trapezoid rule is half as good as the midpoint rule. Because so this has a 24 divided by 24, so that's the smaller error. So midpoint seems to be the way to go between these two. Okay, so the midpoint should have given you a little bit better value than the trapezoid rule. And the reason for that, I don't know if you have. Uh, you go back here. Notice now these are the same as before. This is what the midpoint looks like. But realize it's the same area as you have here. And boy, that's not a bad fit at all. None of those are very bad. A little bit of overshot here, a little bit of overshot there. But it looks really, really good. If you go back to the trapezoid rule, in fact, you can almost picture it on here. Your trapezoid here would be from here to there, and that would have a bit more error. Here would be from there to there. That would have a lot more. That has a lot more error in it, and then this last one is a little more error. So actually, midpoint is a much better thing. It doesn't look like it's a better approximation here, but when you do the tangent line at the midpoint, it shows you much, much better. Okay? Twice as good, basically. Okay? Now, 
this is showing you something else. Oops, 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 oops. Get out of here. Okay. Trying to zoom and it went to the next slide. How are we doing on time? Fifteen minutes. Okay, good. All right. Here we have um, when you have okay. This is showing you our our errors here, or basically. When you're using the trapezoid rule, especially if the function is concave up, let's call it concave up. The trapezoid rule is going to overshot by that amount, overshoot by that amount. The midpoint rule, since you're because you do from this endpoint to that endpoint on the trapezoid rule. Okay. Yeah. From this point to that point, trapezoid rule. Uh, and there's your error right there. Midpoint error, you do find the midpoint of that, you move to the tangent line at the midpoint, and notice the error, at least it looks like that's a lot smaller. Trapezoid always overshoots when it's concave up, midpoint when undershoots when it's concave up. Goodness, this wind on me is just dropping me nuts. Okay. And over here, let's see what we have this set for. Are they still than that, okay? Um, here we're still concave up, uh, but now it's a lot flatter, you know, less resilient. Now you're, again, your trapezoid overshoots and your midpoint undershoots, but again, the trapezoid error is getting larger, which it is. It's typically twice as small, okay? Uh, when, but what they're trying to show here, when the second derivative is quite big, the other derivative is quite large here, then your f double prime is larger and the errors are larger. Here, where the second derivative is changing, the first derivative is changing much less, the second derivative is uh, smaller, the errors are smaller. But this also illustrates why the trapezoid rule is not as good as the midpoint rule. Okay? So it shows both of those. Okay. Um, if the absolute value of the second derivative is small, then your both of these are, are better. All right. Now, <clears throat> this is finally okay. This is a different problem here, I think. This is over on page. This is, let's see, where is this? Okay, I think this is example two. Yeah. Uh, checking the error bound. Calculate M6 and T6 for the integral 1 to 4 of square root of x dx. Now, this is a lot better function to do because number one, we know the answer. You can do this analytically. You don't have to do it, but since this is something we do know, it says calculate the error bounds, calculate the uh, integral exactly, and verify uh, that the error bounds are satisfied. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do on this problem, this is uh, calculating m6 to t6 for the integral 1 to 4, and... So what they've done here, they've shown you the breakdown, okay? Your input, obviously, is 1 to 4. And, okay, as soon as I go to right, it's going to shrink. So, sorry about that. Next thing that you calculate is your delta x, okay? What is delta x? Anyone remember? That was on the last one. Is it this one? This is 4 minus 1, end point 4 minus, minus four. 4 minus 1, divided by, and you're doing n equals 6, so that was 6, so that, sh again, is 3 over 6, so your delta x is 1 half. 
which is 0 0.5. Okay. Now, so for your trapezoid rule, we'll use 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4. We'll calculate our function at each of those places, and then we will do the trapezoid. For the midpoint rule, we first calculate the midpoint of each of these intervals. Between 1 and 1.5 is 1.25. This is 1.75. 2.25, 2.75, 3.25, 4.75. So do those calculations. That's the interval for the end point, the trapezoid rule, the midpoint rule. Okay? Now, it says calculate M6 and T6. Is this your example too also? Does it say, no, I know it's yours. No, no, yeah, okay, no, I didn't know it was okay. M, M6 and T6 for this integral here, the integral from 1 to 4 of the square root of x dx. Is that your example too? Midpoint first, then trapezoid, right? Okay, now, all right, let's do it first. We found our endpoints. Now, for the trapezoid rule, <coughs> we're going to have to calculate the square root of 1, and I can do that one. That's 1, okay? The square root of 1.5, that would be, someone calculate that, square root of 1.5. Okay. A little louder. Uh, 1.22. 2, 2. Four seven, four four eight. Okay. Square root of two. I bet is that one point seven. Wait, oh, messing up. One point four one four. Let me. Yeah. Oh, my eraser didn't work. Right one. I was doing one over root two. One point four one four two. One three five. Okay, let's do two point two five. Square root of that is one point six, maybe. Square root of two point. Yeah. One point five eight one. One. Two eight eight. Three eight eight. Okay, 3, square root of 3, 1.73, okay, um, 3.5, square root of 3.5, Six. I can do square root of four is two. Okay. okay. Now this is for the trapezoid rule. They actually asked for midpoint rule first, so let's go down. I'm gonna do this in blue just to change color or something. Or you give me your favorite color. Red. Red. Okay. Dark red or light red. Okay. I'll do the dark red. Okay. All right, square root of 1.25. Okay, 1.8. One, one, zero. Three. Three. Nine. Okay, got it. Okay, 1.75. 1.2287. 5.6. 5.6. 
okay, 2.25. I knew that one. Why didn't I say it? Okay. 2.75. Eight, 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 three. Six, three. Okay, sorry. I don't hear well. Okay. Uh, three point two five. Six. Okay, and three point seven five. Six three. Three. Th Okay, 1.936. Okay, sorry about that. Three six. Four nine one. Six. Okay, I think we got them all now. That's one two three four five six of those. One two three four five six seven of those. That's right. Okay. So we want the midpoint rule first. So what we're going to do is add those six numbers up. First thing we do, add the six numbers up. 6, 4, 9, 1, 6. Press equal and multiply that answer by 0.5. I'll take half of the answer, whatever. It should be somewhere around 1.5. Six or so. I don't know. I'm guessing. No. That's wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Wrong. Tell me what it is. Okay, wait, 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 just a second. Let me. Okay, four point six six nine two four five. Okay. All right. Let's do the trapezoid rule. Now this is a bit more involved here. Let's do it. <clears throat> I'm going to start from. Um, let's doing our sum first and then see what happens. Well, I can't get my pen to work. Okay. Yeah, I can't get my color to work. Okay, now it did. Okay. One plus, now I'm going to multiply these two in my head, so stick with me. 1.4 Four, nine, four, I'm doubling them, okay? 
So it's 1 plus, I'm sorry, 2.4494896. Okay. No, no, we don't. Okay, if you want to shorten them, shorten them. But we won't get as much precision at the end. Okay, but whatever. Okay. Well, what you're going to do, let me just explain to you. It's one times this one, which is that one, plus twice that, plus twice this, plus twice this, plus twice this, plus twice this, plus that. So that's why I was trying to double for you as we went. But it's one plus two, that goes in there, and that's going to be a three. Plus, and it's going to be two times that, plus two times that, plus two times that, plus two times that, plus two times that. And then you're going to do uh, multiply it by the 25 to make half of that then, and then you're going to multiply it again by uh, another one half, so you're going to take a half again. So it's going to take a quarter of that sum that we just said. It's a lot of adding, a lot of digits. Okay. You did. Okay. So they got a, for the first, for the midpoint rule, 4.669245, good for them. And then, uh, okay, you put the, you just did the square roots yeah, rather. Than, yes, okay, exactly. Perfect. Glad you did it that way. And then they got, for the tra trapezoid rule, they got, 4.661488. Okay. If your calculator does that better, that's fantastic. Okay. Okay. So you got these two. All right. Now it says calculate the error bounds. Okay. Well, we got a couple of figuring to do here. Number one, our f of x is equal to x to the one half. I like to do my derivatives on that, right? So f prime of x is going to be one half x to the minus one half, right? And f double prime of x is going to be minus one fourth x to the minus three halves, right? Now, where is that F double prime is going to be the largest absolute value. So forget about the minus sign in front. Is it going to be at the one end, at the four end, or somewhere in between? Well, this is a function that is it, it's doing something like this. Okay, if you were to draw that negative, so I drew it down here, okay? So, to me, it's maximum error. The, the, the largest this is going to be is going to be at the 1 end. So, if you put a 1 in here for x, square root of 1 is 1, 1 cubed is 1, okay? So, it'd be 1 fourth, that would be a 0.25, right? Okay. Do that for 4, just to see what you get. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. So this will be 1 over 8 because it's 1 over that. And this will be 1 32nd. Guess what? 1 fourth is larger than 1 32nd. So 1 fourth is going to be my f double prime. Uh, no, this is going to be our k2 is going to be, what did I say it was? 0 0.25. I mean, at the 
the uh, left hand end. That's going to be the largest value of that. Okay? And let's see what they got. Yeah, one quarter, 0.25. Okay? Now, the error for your M6, okay, that's going to be, uh, back to what that formula was, it's the K2, which is 0 0.25. This is for M now that we're doing first. B minus A, which is 3, cubed, okay, because B was 4, and, yeah, okay, 24 times N, and your N here was 6, yeah, so 36, N squared, okay. Well, 3 cubed is 27, okay. And if you got a calculator, do it. That would be 0.25 times 27 divided by 36 and divided by 24. It doesn't matter what order you do them. Um, if you want it. 7, okay. Yeah. Okay, say that again. 7.81. Two five negative six three okay okay I'll buy that okay okay now we'll do the same thing for the trapezoid e t six and frankly okay look at the formulas k two is the same b minus a is the same it's just this is twice as much. So this is going to be one point, if you do what they say, I'll do it the other way and you tell me which, if any was any better than that. 1.5625 times 10 to the minus 2. Isn't that what you get? No. Do, I'm just doubling that because, frankly, the trapezoid error is twice what the error is on the midpoint. Still pretty small. K2 is going to be the same, 0.25. Your 3 cubed is still going to be 27. Only the denominator is now 12 times 36, not 24 times 36. you get basically almost the same the same thing yeah yeah because it's twice the other okay all right now here's the last thing it says is are we out of time or you just got to leave we're out of town um, the last thing it said do uh, calculate the integral and that's what I did over to the side while y'all were working on the other thing the integral is x to the one half so when you integrate that Someone calculate what 14 thirds is really quickly. It's not bad. It's 4.66666666. Uh, six, 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 six. However many digits you want to go. I believe that's it exactly because 15 thirds. Yeah, okay. So you see the midpoint rule gave us this. Okay, so we're off at the third decimal point and less than what the error said it would be, whereas the trapezoid rule gave us this and we're off by about, you know, again, it's a little bit greater than what that. So we're both within those error bounds. Okay. Uh, 
midpoint rule got us a little closer, and that's from then point zero zero three, and that's from then point zero zero four. So this this says the maximum error would be point zero zero seven. So I'm going to say point zero one two five. One five. Yeah. So hopefully we've done that one okay. We'll begin next time at. Um, Example three. All right. Now, we've got one more example here, and then we've got Simpson's rule, and that's going to finish the chapter. I have the test ready for you. If you want to take them now, you can, but if you want to just wait till next time, you can take them next time. You're going to have your Thanksgiving week to work on it, right? Because y'all get the whole week of Thanksgiving off. We only get Thursday and Friday. We have to be at meetings Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Okay? So do y'all um, want to take it now or next time? Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, it's up to you. If you know you're not going to be here next time, take it now. <laughs> but if you so, think you will be here. So, huh? Is it Thanksgiving next Thursday? Not, not. Day after, yeah, not this week, but next week. Yeah. And y'all get the whole week off. Huh? Next week. Okay, we are, the, the college is open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But if you have business to do, do it before noon on Wednesday because people start disappearing after noon on Wednesday. Uh, so, uh, but the college will be open. Someone will be around till sometime in the afternoon on Wednesday, but I can't say when. They usually let people go at noon or two or something like that. I can't say for sure, but you know, be here if you have business with the college. Otherwise, y'all don't need to come at all. We'll be here Monday, Tuesday. Now, some people will be at meetings down in Montgomery. I'm not going. I'll be here or on the Birmingham campus. I may go to the Birmingham campus some because it's a little closer to home. But I think for the first part, I'll come out here. Well, no. We're going to have meetings. I'm going to be wherever the meetings are going to be, so I can't tell you where I'm going to be. But when we have the day to ourselves, I'll come to whichever campus I need to. So I don't know where it is. So I can go to the test tomorrow on Wednesday. Okay, you're going to pick it up Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. You too? Okay. Because I think y'all got others to get to me too, don't you? Don't you have a second test? or is yes. It? yes. That's why I just had this. Yeah, that's what I thought you might want to. Okay. And if you see Theo, please let him know. Okay. Good deal. I'm going to end.